What's going on guys? Hopefully you're all doing well. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alex Cormier. I'm a cinematographer based in Eastern Canada. Obviously being a cinematographer, I have a big appreciation for color. Color grading's become kind of my passion in the last two years. And in the last few weeks, I had this idea to do a series where I would recreate looks from different films. Today we're actually going to start with the movie The Killer, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a cinematic masterpiece and you guys I think will enjoy this episode. Alright, so before recreating a look um, in DaVinci Resolve, I usually love to go on Shot Deck and find different stills from the movie just to make sure that my look isn't based on one still on its own, but kind of is representative of the film as a whole. So here I found four stills that I felt represented the movie The Killer. So if we bring them up uh, side by side here, I'll put them full screen. You can see that there's a strong green and yellow cast in the image. If you look at the waveform here, the blue channel is all the way down, even clipping, and the red and green channels are all the way up. Now, if we bring our scopes here, you can see that a lot of the image is actually in the yellow quadrant here and kind of in the green quadrant too. So that kind of gives us an idea of what the overall uh, cast of the image looks like. Knowing that we can also look at contrast. We see that the blacks are really dark here and the highlights are almost clipping on the top. Another thing that I noticed looking at all these images here is the bloom in the image. Now this film in particular was done differently than most films out there. A lot of films shoot on uh, diffusion filters and in this case it was actually all done in post-production. So the bloom you see here in the highlights was actually done uh, using different plugins in DaVinci Resolve. So knowing that we're actually going to start building our node tree here, um, I went in advance and kind of prepped something for you guys just so we'd save a little bit of time um, in the edit. Um, the frame that we're going to be using as our uh, grading image is something I shot in uh, Vegas a few years ago. When I recreate looks, I love to find images that are kind of similar and that just makes it easier to recreate looks uh, because you know what the colors are supposed to look like. So you can see here there's palm trees. It was kind of shot at the same time of day. The overall feel of the image is similar, so that'll help us a lot in the color grading process. So just to show you what uh, the node tree looks like, it's a fairly simple node tree. I feel like a lot of times when recreating looks, a lot of people try to overcomplicate things when in reality, uh, colorists are trying to keep the grade simple and oftentimes simple goes a long way. So I always love to start my node tree with noise reduction um, because this was shot raw. Raw doesn't apply noise reduction in the footage. Uh, so you gotta add it afterwards if there's a noise in your image. I love to add a highlight node just before our color space transform and that will kind of allow us to uh, have perfect control on the highlights of our image. Now in this grade, I'm actually gonna be grading it in uh, the DaVinci Wide Gamut color space. And I remember a few years ago, DaVinci Wide Gamut was super uh, scary to me. I didn't really know how color spaces work, but uh, just hang in there, I'll show you how it's done and you'll see that it's really not that complicated. In our fourth node here, we'll play with a new plugin that I've been testing out for a few months now that is actually essential to build this kind of grade. The sixth node here is the balance node and the balance node is where most of the look uh, of um, the grade will come from. A couple of years ago, I was using offset to kind of get my image in the right ballpark when color grading, but recently I found out this new tool that really changed the way I color graded. So instead of using my offset like I usually used to do, I'm actually gonna right click here in my balance node and go to gamma and select linear. Once that is done, I'll actually drop my Luma mix here and all the color grade will actually happen in my gain wheel here. So compared to offset, uh, linear gain has been really working well uh, for me lately. Now we have the saturation node. Oftentimes when I started color grading, I was just boosting the saturation slider. But one thing I learned recently is you can actually play with the different color spaces to add saturation in a more pleasing way. So here in our saturation node, right click on it, go in color space and select HSV. Once that is done, we'll right click on it again, go to channel and unselect the channel one and channel three. All right, so now we'll start uh, converting our image um, in the right color space. So we'll click on color space transform here and put it on our input device transform node, the third node. 
So this uh, clip was shot on Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema 6K Pro with a Film 5 color science. So when you see that, it doesn't look good and that's perfectly normal. You need to yeah. tell DaVinci Resolve that we want to enter in the DaVinci wide gamut color space. So here on our output color space, we'll click on um, D and select DaVinci wide gamut and our output gamma will be DaVinci intermediate. Now all our grade will be taking place in the DaVinci Y gamut color space, but our output needs to be Rec. 709. So that's where the output device transform comes in handy. So we'll put another uh, color space transform here. And because we work in the DaVinci Y gamut color space, we'll actually uh, click on input color space here and select DaVinci Y gamut, DaVinci intermediate. So we're gonna tell Resolve, I have black magic footage I want to work in a DaVinci wide gamut color space, but from the DaVinci wide gamut color space, I want my final delivery to be exported in Rec. 709. So that's what our output device transform is for. So here we'll select Rec. 709 because we want that to be our final delivery. And as for our output gamma, we'll select gamma 2.4. So right now, our image is perfectly converted to Rec. 709 using the DaVinci Wide Gamut color space. So now what we'll do, we'll save this node for last. Uh, this is a secret sauce, something that I've been extremely excited to show you guys. I've been working with this plugin for a few months um, and it's finally launched, so I'm finally allowed to talk about it. Uh, but we'll save this for the end of the video so you guys don't just skip. All right, so in our saturation node here, um, what I love to do before even giving the color grade um, a look and feel, I love to boost my saturation. By raising the saturation, it just gives you a better idea of where your image is. So I'll raise this uh, gain slider here to boost the saturation. And that's the advantage of working in the HSV color space. So you don't have to work with the saturation slider here. So once that is done, I'll go in my balance node. And if we take our reference side by side again, you'll see that there's a lot of magenta in my image compared to the, the, the reference here. Uh, there's a lot of magenta. There's also not enough green in the image to mimic the same look. That's where the balance node comes in handy. So we'll start uh, dialing that back, uh, kind of reducing the blue channel here, and it'll, it'll automatically introduce some warmth to the image. Now I feel like there's still too much magenta in my image compared to here. So what is the opposite of magenta? It's green. So we'll boost the green channel. And we don't need to do much, like even 0.1 does a big difference here. If we select and deselect this node here, you'll see that just by doing these super minimal changes to our um, linear gain, it completely changed the look of our image. So now that we played with uh, the color a little bit and uh, the image is in a similar world, we see like if we compare our channels here, like the blue channel is down, the blue channel is down and the red and green channels are up, the red, red and green channels are up. Now we could go for a one to one match, but right now when I look at this image, I feel like we're still in the right ballpark and I don't feel like I need to to go any further to, to dial, um, dial the color we might play with the highlights a little bit to match the highlights a little bit better. But other than that, I'm pretty satisfied with where the look is going right now. Um, obviously looking at the highlights here, um, even on our uh, waveform, you can see that our highlights here are a lot higher. So that's maybe something I'll want to tweak just to match the highlight level, but we'll do that afterwards. So when you want to create a pushed look and there's a strong color cast in your image, uh, sometimes it's easy to go too far and the footage kind of looks unrealistic. One thing you can do to make the image look realistic is actually to go in your in your curves and set your anchors. Now you can sell any look as long as your black point and your white points are looking good. So when you play with your, your offset or your linear gain here to give a strong color cast, uh, what you can do to remove the color cast from the highlights and the very dark shadows is uh, using the Luma versus saturation curve. So if we click on the black point here and we drop it down, we basically tell DaVinci Resolve all the dark points, all the dark parts, the darker parts of our images 
remove the saturation from those uh, those luminance points. So usually I love to kind of keep it in the, in the first quadrant here and not go too far because if you go too far you'll start having some artifacts and uh, the saturation level will kind of uh, desaturate at weird levels. So usually the first quadrant here is where I love to set my black point uh, to make sure it's desaturated but it doesn't affect too much of the image. Now we can do the same thing with the white point, kind of bring this a bit closer to the last quadrant and bring the sat the, the curve down so it, it kind of desaturates the highlights. If we kind of do it like a before and after, you'll see that it doesn't do much, but it, it just cleans up the image a little bit. So if we can, if you look here, it just removes the color cast from our darkest parts of the image. Now, one thing I love to do is play with the highlights, but when I play with my highlights, I don't want it to affect all the image. I just want it to affect the highlights. So what I'll do, I'll select qualifier here and do a broad selection of my highlights. What you can do here is select your low soft, bring it up a little bit, and then take your, um, take your low and bring it all the way up until you just have um, the highlights selected. To see what you're selecting, you can click on Shift H on your computer and just start sliding that slider until you just select your highlights. Now that looks good to me, so we'll deselect it just so we know what we work with. Uh, go in our uh, primaries here and just raise the highlights here. So we'll bring back both our images side by side just to make sure that our reference is kind of in the same field. Uh, we'll actually keep raising um, the, the highlights a little bit because if we look on the left, uh, the left hand side, uh, the highlights are a lot higher. So we'll just keep raising them until we get to kind of a similar similar level here. I could go higher to get a one to one match, but I just don't want to go that high. I feel like my image looks a lot better if it's just a bit toned down. Just like that. So the contrast is still high, but we don't kind of blow out the image. Now it's time to talk about the secret sauce. So you guys know that I've been working with Film Convert for quite a few years. And a few months ago, they reached out uh, announcing that they were gonna develop a new plugin called Hazy, which uh, emulates the look of uh, different diffusion filters out there. So I was super excited to test it out, spent the last few months working with them, giving them footage and giving them my feedback as well on how the plugin works. And I'm super stoked. It completely changed the way I color grade, completely changes the way I also film on set. Just having the ability to add diffusion in post-production instead of relying on um, diffusion filters on set uh, has been a really big game changer for me. Oftentimes on set, if you shoot with a diffusion filter and afterwards client decides that he or she wants a cleaner look, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of screwed because you have that look baked into your footage. Whereas if you decide to do it afterwards, it's just one less thing that you need to think of. Um, obviously look, uh, look development, look and feel of your image is something that as a DP, you should communicate with your client beforehand. But uh, we've all been there. Clients decide to go a different route or kind of change their mind on the, how they initially felt about the image. Um, and just having the ability to use that plugin in post instead of using diffusion filters and having that look baked into your footage just gives you more options and a, a little bit more flexibility when it comes to post production. So once we put Hazy on our node here, what I love about it, it's a color space aware tool. So here, uh, because we work in uh, DaVinci Wide Gamut, we'll actually uh, select Black Magic Design and in our Input Gamma, a DaVinci Intermediate. And uh, now this plugin is perfectly uh, ready to be used in the DaVinci Wide Gamut color space. If we go in filter style here, we have a variety of diff different uh, looks to choose from. Um, Black Promise is uh, the default plugin, but there's also uh, Bloom, there's Diffusion, Haze, Pearlescent, Promise Filter, Soft. So what I love to do is just kind of hover over these um, and see what reacts best with uh, my settings. Kind of in the same way that I would use Film Convert's Film Stock, I just kind of hover over the different ones and see what looks best with my image. So on top of the filter style, you can also choose the filter strength. So uh, just for the sake of this video, just to show you how each filter reacts to the image, we're just gonna put it to one, which is a super high strength. So here we started with uh, Black Promise, so we can see that if, if we toggle it on and off, 
it just adds a nice bloom to our image, making our image a lot softer and bloomier and just more filmic, uh, in my opinion. So we can hover over a few of these. I really love how bloom our reacts actually. And we'll play with the strength here. Now that looks very good. What I love to do is just to bring in both images side by side and kind of analyze how it affects the overall image. If it blends into the mint tones and the shadows or if it just uh, stays a bit more confined to the highlight region. So in this case, you can actually play with the spread of the bloom if you want to add more or less spread to the bloom. Now, I really love what it does here. So I think I'm going to use the bloom uh, filter at 10% strength here. Um, you also have the ability to change the white balance. Right now it looks good, so I won't play with it too much. But just to show you here, you can play with the you can play with the, the temperature and the tint of the of the bloom. But we'll toggle it off for now. Same thing for saturation. You can add saturation to the bloom or you can uh, leave it as is. I usually love to put it as is, but I've also uh, done a few videos this year where I actually played with the saturation to give a specific look to the bloom and it looked very good. Same thing here, we have an exposure slider where we can just play with the exposure of our bloom and kind of play with each channel to dial in the look you're going for. So to me, if we bring in both images side by side and we bypass it, I feel like we're kind of, I'm really satisfied with uh, where we're at right now in terms of look. So if we put both uh, still side by side, um, I'll just show you. This is Rec 709 and this is what we've been able to do. So we see that it matches our image a lot better. There is a lot more warmth, a lot more bloom. We were able to pretty well match um, this look. A lot of times you'll say, yeah, Alex, your initial grade look similar because there was uh, the set design was similar but what if uh, you put this look on other shots will the look hold up and we'll actually we'll test it out so i selected a couple more clips here from that same trip that same day um, and we'll just apply the grade here i mean the, the grade definitely holds up so if we disable only the hazy node you'll see that this is really an essential part to the color grade. And I really feel like all colorists, not only all colorists, but also all filmmakers should have access to this tool in their toolkit to make their images stand out. So Film Convert was actually kind enough to give me a discount code for this plugin. So you can use this link right here to get yourself a discount on this uh, on this plugin. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a blast to recreate the look of the killer. I want to do more of these videos. I had a lot of requests from you guys to recreate the look of Interstellar, Lord of the Rings, Ozark, Oppenheimers. There's a lot of interesting color grade tutorial coming. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one.